So this is using the Planck set for NJI. Uh, Planck is uh, an acronym I came up with that combines Apache Flink, Apache Nifi, Apache Kafka, and Apache Kudu. So we got one minute. So wait for that to get started. If you're uh, interested in streaming, or I'm working with edge devices. If you look behind me, I've got a number of devices here that uh, we'll be interacting with. I've got uh, an NVIDIA Xavier. We've got a couple of Jets and Nanos. Got a Raspberry Pi with a uh, NCC2 stick on it. A couple other Raspberry Pis here. Some with uh, AI accelerators. I've got a Coral over there. They're all running, trying to get uh, get us some data in there, so we could do a little bit of machine learning and deep learning at the edge, and then bringing that data in, and we could do additional deep learning while those events are coming through the pipe, and then do more when they land in whatever place they land, whether that's a cloud, space cluster, or something uh, on premise in a set of servers, or even just in a laptop. Uh, missing New Orleans here, but at least we've got the uh, slides here. I kept it a very uh, New Orleans theme. If you haven't seen the thing to build your own badges, the link is out there. It's really cool. You just type in your thing, build it up. I'll probably print one out for tomorrow's session. You just missed the first talk that I had with John Kutrak, or you were there. Hopefully, you were there. It was more fun with. Uh, John joining me next time. I should have brought him on this one. But the rest of my talks, I'm doing it with a co presenter. And the exciting one for today after this is the real time stock processing one. That's with Pierre Villard, the NIFI committer and PMC. So we'll have some really good insights there. And we'll show uh, a demo of using NIFI to grab in stock feeds, do some processing with them. Send them to a couple of different event streaming frameworks, put them in storage, do some uh, simple analytics. And then tomorrow, I pretty much have the, almost the same uh, lineup. The uh, happy lunch, uh, post lunch uh, meetings here. I got a Apache Deep Learning 301 with Dr. Brooks. Uh, we'll be covering some general data science. And then from my side, I'll show you some data engineering and how to run some deep learning within NIFI with EDL and MXNet. And after that, I've got a talk with uh, Paul Vidal. He's doing something very similar to what I'm talking about today, but he's got an uh, interesting uh, shift on that. And then finally, a very interesting IoT talk with uh, Sunil from Texas going over some of the things you could do with IoT using Apache projects and some different connectors from third parties. So what is Flank? If you've heard of LAMP or SMAC, you kind of get the idea. I, I saw a, a lack of a, a cool acronym for the streaming frameworks that I use from Apache. And SPEC very often use them together because they really flow together nicely. And I'll show you why I decided, well, let me put them together and the, the names kind of fit together nice. You know, we could outflank some of those other streaming things, but uh, it's just funny. Since it was a K, and I keep pushing the Kudu, I like to Kudu in there. But it could also be H space, but that doesn't sound as good. Or I could just push to HDFS or Ozone, a whole bunch of other data stores. But having uh, the K and Kudu and Kafka together makes it nice when you put it in there. This is a common flow. And this is pretty much what we do for the edge AI. I'll have a Minify agent, which is a Apache sub project for uh, Apache NIFI. And that one is running on a device, but it can run Kubernetes, Docker, 
could just run on a server. Some people will run this on a SQL server to grab those logs. And then we send them to NiFi over HTTP. There's a couple of protocol choices there. NiFi can run some MXNet. You can also run PyTorch. I don't know what their license is, but I can run that. Too. And then uh, commonly, once I clean up the data, figure out where I want it to go, I'm going to push a cleaned up version of that data to Kafka to a topic. And I'm going to convert that usually in Avro, which is a nice format for data, also a package. And that will have a schema on it. So when I'm talking to as many of these consumers, they'll understand what the records look like, what this data looks like. Makes it uh, very easy for them. I'm just checking my other screen to see if people have questions. Feel free to uh, interject or ask questions at any time. Don't worry about it. So once it comes through Kafka, because we have that schema, Flink can easily understand what that data is. And then often I'll do some processing in Flink, which could be just a SQL query, it could be a join, or I can, when I'm done, whatever processing I'm doing, I could just insert it into another Kafka topic and then have NiFi push it to a data store. I could have Flink stream it to a data store. I could have Kafka connect to it. Uh, there's a lot of flexibility in the Flink stack. It really depends on what connectors you have, what data stores you have, what paradigm the, the storage is, you know, what you want to check. They all work together and they have some overlapping roles. NiFi is really the best one along with its little buddy Minify to start getting that data at the beginning, find the sources of data, bring them in, validate them, you know, get that source of truth going, know what they are, and then start them through there. I'll also show you part of that is while I'm doing this, I'm pushing uh, metadata to Apache Atlas so that I can see a lineage of how I got data into the system. And again, I'm pushing the Kudu, but I can push the HBase. Or we saw in the last talk, we can push it to Hive, we can push it to a database, whatever makes sense. As part of this, and sticking with the Apache license, I'm using uh, MXNet and DGLI as part of the uh, AI, data science, machine learning, deep learning, whatever you want to call it as it comes through the data flows. And I'll show you that more tomorrow in Apache Deep Learning 301. But we'll touch on this, and this is also in uh, a GitHub I'll post out. You can look through all the examples, see documentation, see uh, why this might be interesting. So this makes this nice, is I can run deep learning on the edge. As I mentioned, I've got a Xavier and a Nano. Those are really great for running classification or a lot of different models there. My Xavier has three cameras on it. They're feeding a couple different algorithms, and then they're sending that data through a Minify agent into NiFi. NiFi will do some processing to it, goes through Kafka, Flink apps can run, deep learning as well. And then if I want to connect to, you know, some cloud available machine learning, I could do that. I connected it with Cloud Air Machine Learning, also done it with AWS and Azure and IBM. You know, there's a lot of options out there. Here's a little diagram of what's happening. So I've got a number of devices on the edge. One of them has some sensors. That's that little device behind me. We can see that little string. That's a nice uh, Raspberry Pi hat that pulls in a bunch of sensors. So I'm getting some sensor reading. I'm getting some device data because when you're doing anything with these edge devices, you want to know their health. Am I running out of disk space? You know, how's my processing doing? What's the temperature of the device? Am I going to overheat? Should I shut things down? Those sort of things. So I get all that data, format it nicely in JSON, and send some strings in through Minify to NiFi. NiFi running in a small private cloud instance. And from there, I'm pushing to a number of data stores that I have there, like HBase or Impala or Kudu. And then from there, I'm using a schema to make sure that it's formatted correctly for uh, the Kafka topic that it's going through. 
And those can be read by Kafka Connect apps, can be read by Slink apps, can be read by another NiFi consumer, especially if I want to hear from a NiFi that's local or at the edge or at a gateway and have that used in a public cloud or just another cluster. I don't care where it's running. And then maybe have Slink dealing with some object stores or Kudu. And then I can do visualization with Apache EQ or some other reporting tool. Pretty standard way you might want to get in, you know, machine data from the edge. Fancy arrows there. Now I have links to almost everything I'm doing, and I'll make sure these slides are shared out end of today and that you have all the links. If you're interested in learning more, trying things out, it's there for you. On the left, I'm just showing you how uh, the Minify flows work. So all that's running on an edge device. I'm selling some logs. I'm listing a directory of images, setting off a camera, setting off another camera. One of them is doing thermal scans. And then from NiFi, consuming some Kafka pushes to Kudu. You saw how easy it was to pull from a database and put to uh, another Apache data store. From Kafka to Kudu is just one step. It's all record-based. So Send me a different type of record to tell me what the schema is, and I'll automatically be able to push to the right table in the right format. No change in code, no stopping, you change the version, pass me that new version. We're good to go. I can work with the old one and the new one in different types without having to change anything. Very straightforward to do that, and we'll walk through those examples. So, this is a, a cleaner picture of what's right behind me. So you can see some of the devices there. So there's sensors and cameras, a bunch of different protocols. Here I'm reading two sensors. I'm also using some uh, native uh, AI on there from OpenDino. This is important. So when I have that data, I have a standard thing I like to do. I like to give it a unique ID for every event. And I like to put in some host name, MAC address, device information so I know which one it came from because I don't just have one edge device. I don't have just one Raspberry Pi. There's over the years they keep seeming to build up. So there's a lot of them. So it's good for me to know where this piece of data came from. And then here I've got sensors and then I've got some of that device metrics that I mentioned like CPU, CPU temp, disk usage. That's important to have. It's also important to make sure you have some time stamps in there. Very important for event processing. Also, so you figure out, okay, are things still running? Okay, yeah, things are still running. I can see the data coming in. Helpful. JSON is widely accepted, very easy to work with in NiFi, and it's very simple for me to infer a schema where I've already built this schema and we convert it into Avro, send that to a Kafka topic, and then I could have a Spring Boot consumer. Or I could have a Kafka Streams one, Kafka Connect, NiFi, Spark. A lot of Apache projects can read it, a lot of others. So these are some of the sensors just to give you an idea. Also running a Xavier. I just took this behind me. Uh, I can run live ones and output a, a whole lot of data, but uh, not much going on here. This is more fun. When we're in person, I could I usually set this up on the stage to see different things going on at the conference. Not much going on in this conference space, which is my little lab here. But and from there, very easy for me to route that data to wherever it needs to go. Let me get past some of this. You know, you'll you'll have these slides. Better off to get into the demo. A lot of I get a lot of slides. And a lot of links. So you can get into those anytime you want. But let's show you some real things going on. Let's show you some real data coming in. Hopefully nothing's crashed while we're while I've been doing these two sessions. And I can find the right windows. We have a, a I have a lot of a lot of different apps running because we got uh, three talks today and three tomorrow. So there's a bunch of different apps running. Hopefully I didn't lose my network here while I've been gabbing on here. Oh, nice, nice and slow here. Everything more like. 
Okay, so I'll show you this one. This one I'm grabbing weather data. It's pretty straightforward. You know, most people are used to grabbing a REST API. What's different here is I'm grabbing an entire zip file of XML. And then within NIFI, I'm unzipping it, unpacking it, uh, routing based on what that data looks like and then doing a real-time query to convert XML into JSON. And then from those events, I do a, a query on it, you know, to throw away some of the bad data. And I've got this data that's coming in. I pull it into my uh, consumer here. I could start the whole thing. Uh, I'm just setting a schema here to say which, which schema it should use to look up. So this is weather data. So I have a weather schema here stored in my schema registry. So it tells me, you know, what are all the fields, what are the types, the support null, that sort of thing. And then what I want to do is if, if those records that are coming in are not valid against the schema, and here there's a couple of options. I said, don't make the type too strict. You know, if there's some extra fields, don't blow up. It's, it's not going to blow up an IFI. So if it's invalid, I'm sending it here. Maybe I want to put that in the storage. Maybe I want to uh, send a message to someone. Uh, I know this data is coming from the government, so there's not much I can do about it. So I'm just going to not use those. And here I'm going to push to my Kafka topic. This is a parameter. This is, is extracted from NIFI. So if I want to move to production with a DevOps process, that's separate from my code. The code and configuration get combined and I push it to another server. I posted a link to an article how to do that using either the NIFI CLI or the REST API. Everything in NIFI is a REST API. If you turn on your developer console, you see all these REST calls happening. It's a pretty good way to learn if you want to do uh, NIFI programming via REST. It's really straightforward. So what we're doing here is taking the weather and pushing this out as Avro. So we have Avro with a schema, and I'm going to read that in another server. Hopefully this one is up. This one is up. So I, I shifted it from my laptop here in my little office, and I'm reading that here in the uh, Amazon cluster. Pulling in from a Kafka broker for that weather, I get Avro in. I'm going to push JSON out, because why not? And then I'm going to push that into a Kudu table with an upstart. Again, I don't have to know the fields. I don't have to write any SQL. I don't even really need to know Kudu that much. I could switch it to a regular JDBC uh, just by doing that, or I could decide to put it somewhere else. Now, I don't want to tell you to put it somewhere that's not an Apache place, but I can store it in a lot of different uh, places like Hive, like uh, HDFS, you know, any of the Amazon data stores, Azure. You, know, you can kind of get the idea. There's a lot of places I can put data, but uh, CUDA is a nice place to do that and meet with the flank stack. One thing that's very cool about NIFI we didn't mention is the same data provenance. So I could see as that data is coming in, what happened, and I get detailed information. What was the Kafka offset? What was the timestamp, topic, you know, which team I used? I had 800 records that processed in this one batch here. I could even look at the data before and after. Helpful things. Plus, we've got a retry here in case it fails. I've decided in code what I should do with that. And then when I come in here, I'm just going to uh, parse the data so I could send it to a Slack channel. Pretty straightforward. Let's see if we can get to those other ones. Okay, this one's helpful. So, what I do with data, you'll, uh, I have part of my data is images. As we mentioned before, so here I've got, let me show you how this starts. So I've got that Minify agent. 
And I've got uh, one list there here. It's just an easy way to do it. So as stuff gets pushed in from any of these agents to NIFI, I'm just going to have it come in one place. And then looking at the user agent, I'll decide where I want to send it. So this is pushing in from a bunch of different devices. I see one, and it's just doing that auto routing for me. Pretty easy to do. But again, remember when I said I care about you know what what that information is. So when I'm processing a device, I want to know what the IP is, what the MAC address. So when that data comes in, I'll know what it is. Again, here doing some processing, looking at the data, decide what I want to do with it. Uh, there's some data I have here that's standard out. It's good for me for debugging, so I'm keeping it. But if you look at the data, not very useful. But uh, the kind of data you get when you're running these uh, deep learning processes uh, in the NVIDIA on the standard out. So there's a, a ton of information there. If I was trying to debug why a model was giving me a result, I can uh, look at that closely. Again, or I can parse it with something like, say, Apache Pika or Tesseract and figure out what I want to do with it. Uh, another thing I'm getting is images from those cameras I have. I have three cameras on that device and I'm pulling in a bunch of them. Some of them raw, some of them processed by the framework. And then I just send them to uh, another bit of NIFI to process them. Over here, I'm doing the similar thing. We've got data coming from that device. It's Jason, I need to build the schema for this. I don't really need to. As you see here, I got a bunch of records waiting to get pushed to Kafka. We've got these configurable queues in NIFI. But when I'm ready to do it, I'll just turn it on. I'm not going to lose any data. If my queue fills up, it, it could be, I could turn it on so it'll auto resize based on some machine learning. Or I could just make it larger. Or I could just decide to turn on what I'm doing. So this will look familiar. I got that unique ID I like to put in there. This one, I also put the name of the camera I'm using. Since I have three different cameras, I want to know which image it was. Uh, the Xavier supports a lot of concurrent cameras. So if you had this as a security system or as something in an office or whatever you're using your camera for, that's important information. Got my IP in there. Got how much time it took. You know, percentage of match. You know, that sort of thing. There's a couple different types of data I get in there. And I'm just going to push that to Kafka because why not? And then over here, like I mentioned, I have that those images coming in. I keep a local copy of them because I like to have images. I'm also doing something which is in, in NIFI. I can upload those images to uh, a Slack panel. So I'm just going to change this one and put that in the uh, Apache Con. I have my own Slack, so I'm not spamming you guys. Which people will be wondering where these weird images coming from. I'm also sending a message here. This is a uh, different probability and some of the things I want to display in a message. I'll start this. This is a EGL processor using MXNet. That's the MXNet. Do it analytics on these images while it comes through NIFI. And then you get pushed to. Some of them were pushed to that old one. Uh, I didn't switch that one. And then uh, the images should start showing up over here to see who it figured out. So, yeah, so it's starting to up already. And while it's sending in that other data, I sent in that Kafka data. Pushed in those results as you see. It's taking those images. It's uh, posting the results to them. I turn down how many I send to Slack at a time. Otherwise, it gets uh, a little crazy. You see here, it, it found the tie, which is pretty cool. Why I put a tie in that? My own business. So we can see the results down here. This is the probability of what I thought it was. It uh, whatever that one is. It got my chair in the picture, which is pretty cool. So we're running that to get those results. This gives you an idea. Now I push 
some of the data to Kafka. So let, let's take a look, make sure we're getting that data. I want to make sure getting data coming in. So we have a lot of different sources of data. Uh, later, we're going to talk about the stock data. Uh, one of the sources was weather. Uh, we get a lot of options here, a lot of different topics. Uh, which one is important? You know, we have many sources of data. You know, whichever one makes sense here. Uh, let me push some more of that weather data. That is a useful one to have. Uh, that weather data is nice because it comes from all over the country. And then when I get that, I'm pushing that to Kudu so I can push that in some graphs. So I can see all the different uh, results from different uh, airports around the country. Interesting information. So let's, let's look back at our Kafka topic. Just keep my eye out for questions there. So we've got stock. I'm pushing it to a lot of different places. Let's look at uh, weather. Again, something I mentioned with this is that I'm doing this in Avro. So I can connect that with the schema. Again, it's nice to use the schema so I can use that everywhere. So that's the weather data coming in. I have that in Kafka. And then from Kafka, I'm going to consume that in NiFi, push that to a Kudu table where I can read that from, you know, let's do an order here. Observation time, descending. So just the uh, whatever's the newest stuff uh, that's coming out of uh, Kudo using Impala's uh, interface there, and we can see different uh, weather information. Uh, I can take a look at uh, columns that are more interesting for me. I'm considered uh, location, observation time. Yeah, don't use reserved words. Otherwise, you got to use the uh, Things to uh, hide it. And then I could just do things like maybe temperature strain, just to show a couple of uh, values there that are interesting. So you can see different temperatures across the country. You know, when I did this read in uh, Fahrenheit and Celsius, whichever one you're happy with. And then I just use that same data. It also has Latin long. So I could push that to uh, a chart and I'm grabbing that. We were supposed to be down here, and it, it's pretty hot down there. So as much as I miss it, you know, the temperature in uh, New Orleans here is uh, oh, 57. That must have been earlier. 80, that's not too bad. But uh, it depends on what time we did that reading. So let's take a look. I want to see if uh, the guy thing. What do we have here? Question. How could you call a deep learning Python script that needs to run on a separate server receiving the results from that script back to NiFi? That is pretty easy. Now, we have a couple options. Give that right to a file, which I do that on some of the devices, right to a file. And I can put a Minify agent on there and read that file either as a sale or as a whole file and send that to NiFi. That's one option. If that other server has a REST interface, I can call that. I can wrap it in something like Apache Spark or in any of these machine learning runners to do it with Zeppelin. Uh, if it's just a Python script, I usually have Minify running on there. So I can show you that. Let me go to uh, command line, everyone's favorite place. Actually, how I'm running the uh, that process. I have a directory here with a couple of shell scripts. Yeah, shell scripts. And you see here it's calling Python. So this is not where my NiFi server is. This is where that little Minify agent is. It's small. I'm using the Java one. You can use the C plus plus one. Pretty small, it's running on Xavier, running on Minify, and I'm using that to coordinate running that script. But I also have other places where I just have something running on its own. Let me see if I can find that one. Again, we have a lot of, I have a lot of servers here. 
Okay, yeah, this one's running. So here I'm doing just what you said. I have a Python script running, and it's just writing to a, a file, and then Minify is reading that file. So that's one option. Yeah, whether you print those results to a file or have Minify execute that Python, it really depends. I usually put Minify on that device if it's possible. So if it's anything that runs Linux, Mac, or Windows, and has at least a couple megs of RAM, obviously it's something like an, uh, an Arduino, it's too small for that. But those sometimes will have, you know, I've got a Adafruit device over there on a the wall that pushes out the blue Tuplo energy messages, and I can read them from another device or a gateway or a server. Uh, your other option is some of these will have Wi-Fi and they can, they can push out whether that's MQTT or REST or just uh, some other protocol, you can usually read that or have someone read it for you. Uh, if you look at my examples, I generally have Minify run that Python script or read the results of it. If you look at the, I'll share the GitHub, it's very easy to write to a file in Python. You just write those results of those deep learning Python scripts to a file. Uh, you can also call uh, depends on what framework it is. MXNet also has the ability to run within Java, which uh, I showed you very slightly here. It was uh, a little, if you look here, the, this information is going to look familiar. I'm running an MXNet. Uh, there's a Java connector for MXNet. There's also, if I use uh, DDL, there's one for some other frameworks like PyTorch and TensorFlow. So I can run a lot of that through NiFi. As you see here, that makes it pretty straightforward. I get back all those results, and I have NiFi doing it for me. If I look here, uh, I wrote this one. It's giving me back the class results in a bounding box around that image. So that's pretty straightforward. And then I'm pushing that image to Slack, as we saw before. So we got a couple of new messages because I just have that running in a flow, what it's doing. Did we get any more uh, images uploaded? A couple more. Got a couple different cameras, and as you can see, they look uh, slightly different angles. One I've got pointed towards me, one I've got pointed towards the screen. Uh, let's see what it thought this one is. So that was a chair. I guess if you're a really small person, I mean, it does kind of look like a chair. I guess I can't fault the, the algorithm for that. I mean, that, that's kind of legit. Any other questions? And I, I'll share the GitHub. I've got the, a master GitHub I have here for Apache Com that has a lot of things, including scripts to build all this material and links to uh, a couple of uh, deep learning processes here. These uh, have these in Java, but I've got some other links here on how to run the Python one. So yeah, that's pretty straightforward. So let's get back to the program here. So it's pushing data to Kafka from NiFi. So we've gotten through that step where we've got the data from the edge. Which could be that deep learning script, could be sensors, could just be grabbing from a log. We got that into NiFi, cleaned it up, validated against the schema, pushed it to Kafka. We saw data coming through Kafka, lots of different topics depending on what they were. Those are coming in. We get that data, and then from there, I'm going to take it and I could put it into an app. And I've got a couple of different apps here. For whether I a uh, Kafka Connect app, a Kafka Connect app is really simple. It's just waiting on that topic and reading those Apache Avro messages and just dumping them to a directory uh, in HDFS. Pretty straightforward. But just to show you one of the things you can do, so we can also take a look at a Flink process here. I've got one that's reading from one of the other sets of devices I have, which I didn't show you yet, I can show you that one too. Like I said, I have a lot of devices here. Uh, besides that, Xavier, I also have a Raspberry Pi 4 with all those sensors. Now I have this on pause, 
uh, which is nice for these queues. You can see some of the data coming in, some of that from that log that that Python script writing. And you can see it kind of has that name that suggests it. Uh, some of them is the, uh, what is this data? This might be the standard out from, uh, this is another row from a different uh, Python process. So those are going to come in and we're going to sort them out based on what they are. If they're energy ones, I'm looking at uh, some energy sensors. Uh, over here, I've got some different sensors and I'm going to uh, do some queries on them, decide what I want to do with them. And then for uh, the more important ones, which are the uh, IoT style ones, pushing it to Kafka. Again, sounds pretty familiar. So this is pretty much the flank paradigm. Data gets into NiFi, could be from Minify, could be from 100 other sources. I clean it up, validate it, put it in a format that makes sense, try to align it with a schema if it's tabular, if it's images or something else. Maybe send that to some deep learning within Java or elsewhere. But if it looks like a table, has a schema, let me treat it as such and send that through the system. So I've got on this side, I have energy data, this side I have data data, some sort of IoT. And if we look, I've got a couple of things that are going to process those. Again, I automatically built those using a script in that GitHub. I have a schema for all these sort of things, you know, like energy, I spell it right, and whatever other yeah, here is energy, and one for theta, so I could process that as it comes in. Let's make sure we have some of that data coming in that we just started sending. So we see some energy data. Let's see if there's any showed up. Got an alert, it's been off for a while. So I paused it, so I'd have a nice batch of data. Again, it's in Avro format as a schema. I could see here, I put a, a Kafka key in there. That makes it easier to work with Kafka Connect. So that's something I learned, and it makes sense to have a key for Kafka. Makes it easier if you want to correlate between what showed up in your sink, what was in your store, what's, in, what's still in Kafka. Helpful along with knowing the offset and the timestamp, but having that key is, especially I use the key that's the UUID here, so I could track it back to the uh, event coming off that device. Very helpful. So let me uh, show you what happens next. So what happens next is a Flink application. Again, it's part of that Flank stack. This is perhaps the easiest distributed application that reads from multiple Kafka topics and populates a third uh, <laughs> that you'll ever see and that anyone will ever write. Uh, that's why I highly recommend Flink SQL. If you see here, this statement here is all I need for the uh, Flank stack to be populating a Kafka topic. So what I'm doing is I'm selecting a couple of fields from that uh, theta topic you see here, and some of them from that energy topic. And we, we can see both of those. You can see data coming in. We That's the energy one. Then we'll look at theta. And we see they both have data coming in. Again, they were both off for a little while. I had a uh, alert set up there. Again, put a key in there. This one's coming off as a different ID. Okay, there's all the fields from there. So I see that coming in. So Flink is taking it from both of those things we have there, to make it a little easier to read here. And that coming in, as we see here, I processed for the join about 26,000 records, and they're getting pushed into this third Kafka topic, which has the schema here. This is the uh, global sensor. That's what I'm calling it. Uh, also, I, I like to use the word global if it's something I'm going to use maybe Kafka schema replication to uh, change replication to push it somewhere else to another uh, cluster. And so this is a join of those two. It's an inner join. I could have done an outer join, but I, I wanted to get ones where they match up on time. So I got the sensor readings at the same time I did the energy 
again, maybe this is I join a bunch of different uh, sensors in the field together. You know, you could do a lot with the people within Flink. So this is just running. I didn't have to do much to launch this. I'll show you the shell script for that later. And I'm also running a uh, Flink SQL command line so I can query it. Yeah, I know, command line, but with the Apache Con, I can say command line. So to show you the different catalogs that Flink could use, I'm going to use the registry one. If you can't guess, that's that schema registry when you saw those schemas. You'll guess it better when I show you a list of tables here. So all these make sense right now. I'm populating SCADA and energy. And that insert Flink SQL is populating that table. So let's take a look at that table. Uh, it's not a table, though. This is a Kafka topics with real-time event data. So I want another Kafka job. So pretty shortly, you'll see another job show up here. And this is that SQL statement. And you can get all the kind of metadata there that's nice to have. And here, I can see the old data, the new data. And this is the data that's happening now. So as events come in, this is a continuous query. So it'll just start showing up. So we're here at 1454. Let's see if we have more data coming into the system for, uh, for this guy. See a couple coming through. Uh, they do have to match up, though. That's why I kind of do it in a batch there. Because uh, I only have it coming in through one a second. So we have that data coming through, coming into Kafka. We should be starting to get some more messages. So we look down here, 54, getting some new events popping in. Again, we could also look at different queries. I can look at the uh, energy data as it's coming in. Pretty straightforward. Now, if you want to deploy this in an environment, as an application, I can write a Java app in Flink, wrap this SQL in it, and deploy it, and do whatever I want with this query. I could push to any of uh, Flink uh, stores, or very commonly, I'll read this data with SQL from that Kafka topic or from Kudu or from other sources, do some processing, maybe do some uh, machine learning and then push that to another topic. And you see here, it just wrote a new record here, it's coming in, the new data is coming in. Starting to use more data on my disk. At some point, they're gonna worry if I'm gonna run out. I cancel that job, and we got this other one where I'm pulling from energy. This one's still running. This is on an Apache Yarn cluster here, pretty straightforward. Yes, I am using Flink SQL to join and distribute. Oh, out of time. Sorry about that. I will uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks for joining.